uh, where you can do your coding uh, using multiple languages as well as in spark okay so for all our coding purposes hands-on purposes uh, we will be using databricks right so databricks comes with a full-fledged version which is a paid one okay and for students and for your learning and exploration databricks comes up with a community edition right so we will create an account in a community edition and use that one so in order to do that just type uh, over your google databricks community edition okay it will open a link click there so at first you might not be having a community edition so just go for new to databricks sign up here just enter your detail okay. email so how long it will be valid is it like 15 it days is, it is lifetime days? valid it is lifetime valid it is lifetime valid there is a uh, 14 days trial where we can explore all options of databricks but that's just for 14 days right for our learning purpose a community edition will work there are some advanced concept for which we need a full-fledged databricks version but we will figure out i mean either i will show that those things through my office laptop or i will work with visual path team to create a 14 days trial account but the community edition is valid for a lifetime so will i get all the features like whatever you are showing in the portal uh, whatever I'm showing in the uh, portal, whatever I'm showing during the session, you will be getting all of them. But there are certain advanced feature of Databricks, which we will be using when we'll work in a project, in a real-time project, right? Those features are not available in Community Edition, okay? And uh, those features, I mean, if you take a subscription for that, that is very costly. So ideally, uh, in an individual level, we don't need it. So when you work in a project in your company, uh, you will get those things. So how to use that and all, I will show you in one or two classes. But that is not needed for your day-to-day -day practice or learning purpose. For learning purpose, whatever we need, we should be getting it in a community edition. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Yeah, so after filling this detail, click on continue. Okay, do not go for this continue option because this is that uh, 14 days trial, what I was talking about. Click on getting started with community edition. So once you click on this, uh, you can do it right away, parallelly when we are doing it. Okay. Once you click so AWS this, will... is the by default one, right? Uh, when it comes to Google providers, it is AWS all the time or uh, like I have to explicitly choose you... the middle one. By default, it is getting uh, AWS, but if you want, you can go for, no, do not, that, that's what I'm saying, right? Do not click on this part. Ignore this, but do not select anything from here. Do not click on this continue. Click on this get started with community edition. Okay. 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 Click on get started with community edition. Okay. Once you click on get started with community edition, it will just ask you to solve a puzzle. That's a simple one. Then it will ask you for an email verification. Once you are done, then you will be able to log into the uh, Databricks community edition uh, environment. Clear? Thank you. Just try it out. Just try it out. It should be it should be working for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying in parallel. Okay. Uh, in yesterday's class, there are some uh, exercises that I have asked to practice. So, did everybody give it a try? Any questions? Hello. Can I take it that uh, we are good with that? No questions. No doubt. Or we didn't try itself. Guys, I need a response. Uh, I, I couldn't uh, get a chance to uh, try it, so but maybe I'll try today. Okay. What about others? Would you like to try one more? Uh, would you like to give it one more day? And then, if you face any issue, come up tomorrow. Will that work? yes sure okay sure fine then uh let's move to sql i believe uh you know uh, people has quite a good amount of uh, i mean people has good amount or at least fundamental understanding of sql in this batch but there are certain still some people who are uh, unfamiliar with sql so we will cover some basics the idea of this class is to give you a uh, give you what exactly 
you know our sql database table is all about how to write program how to write code using sql so here we'll cover things like how to create a database how to create a table how to query a table uh, you know how to insert data into a table how to update a table how to delete data from a table uh, how to drop a table then uh, you know we'll also cover uh, uh, this i mean different functions like how to find sum of a but some of all values of a particular column count uh, the number of records in a particular table right max and mean value then uh, we will understand how joins work if i have multiple tables and i want data from multiple tables how to do that using joins what are different types of joins available in sql then we'll understand the aggregate functions right so for example i want value based on an aggregate for example there are multiple departments um, in a company and i want every department how many employees are there so that's called aggregation right so those aggregate so this is what i'm planning to cover as part of this sql uh, session okay so let's start <clears throat> uh, now see every company every organization and everywhere they need data right they want to store data okay they want to retrieve that they want to do they want to play around with the data so data is the most crucial part of any organization or any entity for that matter and uh, data as in and it should be in a usable format so when we are talking about any report or uh, any analytics on top of it mostly we are expecting data in a structured format now with the advent of time the unstructured semi structured data has come up but most of our transactional reporting today also happen on structured data so eventually what we do whenever we are getting reading data from a unstructured or semi structured uh, format also we try to process them apply some rules and try to get them into a structured format so that it can be usable further now let's say you have a company okay and uh, this company is working on some product okay they have multiple uh, stuff uh, you know they wanted to uh, the, they have the data analytics team want to understand multiple thing right for example uh, which of my product are highest selling uh, which of my department is generating more revenue uh, which of my employees are performing well how my sale has been over a period of time how's the last 6 months is behaving how last 2 months is behaving is there a pick or is there a dip in my sale so all these things we need at the end of the day right to understand our business to uh, you know to see if there is there is, there there can be further anything that we should do to you know to improve our business and such require not only a company but also any institute for that matter right so what we do we try to arrange the data in a tabular format like a row and column format right so here i'm just trying to give a very simple example let's say there is a company okay they have their employee data they have their department data they have their product data they have their voicing invoice data they have their order uh, order data which is happening on a day to day basis so these are the information they are maintaining okay so these are mostly the transactional data when i say transactional data these are usually the transaction that the company is doing on a day to day basis right they are selling they are procuring product they are giving money in order to procure product they are selling their products and earning money right so all those things are happening on a day to day basis so that's what we call transactional data these data in a typical uh, database uh, you know world we call it as dimensional data when we say dimensional data these are give dimensions to the transaction right when i say that uh, this particular customer i have a data so i want to understand a detail about this customer so i might create a table for customer you know where i know that this customer belongs to this particular this id belongs to this particular name this particular let's say country okay area and all that right in order to understand that from which country or which area uh, you know i am getting the maximum or minimum sales and all that right so we try to correlate between our dimensional data with our transactional data to get an end to end view the dimensional data usually doesn't grow beyond a point they are very limited in number but transactional data keeps growing because this is something happening on a daily basis right your uh, uh, you know your customer i mean you are doing the same transactions for a customer with every day but the customer information is static 
right once you enter it there are hardly any changes there will be minor changes but it will be an update you are not going to enter a new this one for it your employee table will not grow exponentially the way your transactional data will grow so these tables are called dimensional data and this is called as transactional data this is a simple uh, you know uh, introduction to data modeling but data modeling is not part of this so first thing we need is a table right there is a table available correct where we store our data now a table has mostly three properties what are they what are the properties of a table what i mean by seeing this this is let's say an employee table what is that you can identify the what could be the property of a table come on anybody columns okay columns yes the data columns what are data type okay data type of the column okay nice what else should have um, a primary key unique key that those are part of columns right you can consider them as a part of column I mean, yes, there are detailed understanding of that, but for the time we will consider them as part of column. Relationship data. with other columns, other table. Uh, relationship with other table, okay, that's true. I mean, we are talking about primary key and foreign key, agreed. But again, as I'm telling, these are just considered on a single table. And uh, as you mentioned, the, those are all covered under this value called columns. Apart from that, rows, indexing, rows. Okay rows when you say rows okay fine rows what, what indexing indexes okay indexes okay constraints okay fine so those are mostly applied on columns of the data right okay fine i'm taking it index and constraints are the same okay fine what next views uh let's think from a table perspective view is the next thing so let's not consider view at this point let's think. think of a table sorry what is that Headings. Headings. When you say heading, what is it? Yeah, by heading, I mean like the, it is a uh, unique uh, data to something, right? Data to something. If okay. you are putting data, um, yeah, if you are putting data into something, you need to give it uh -huh. proper heading. So I thought heading. Okay, so can you give an example when you are putting data into something? For example, when I'm putting entering data for this employee table, let's say I'm entering employee ID, name, age, salary, address. So which part you consider as heading? Mm -hmm. Name head, name is. Okay, those are column, column, right? Those are that is what it is mentioned. These are called columns. Okay, these are called columns, mm -hmm. right? And the individual entries, individual values are called rows. That's what it is mentioned. Okay. So here, when you say column, data type, indexes, what is a single name for it? We call it as schema. It identifies the table. The table contains what all columns, what are the data type, employee ID could be an integer, employee name is a string, age is an integer, salary is a double or float, address is a string, department ID could be an integer, okay there are uh, primary key the employee id is a primary key this identifies the value uniquely so all those things are covered under a single bracket called schema okay? which defines what attributes the table contains which defines the behavior of the table next thing what you have seen is rows this is what called the data right what is there inside the table this defines the behavior of this defines what data is there in the table next all these things when you are telling we are just seeing table as a logical layer right there must be some storage behind it so whenever you are creating a table all this data must be stored somewhere right there must be a physical storage behind it so that then that comes your storage usually that store as a file format or something some uh, most of the popular file format is a dbf file that they store so your storage or where you do is a server right that's where you store the data so these are the three important part of any table schema which talks about what columns what are the types of the columns uh, then other some constants or indexes then what data inside the table and then where exactly this data in which format they are lying mostly the table data stored inside a table in file format okay so these are the three attributes of a given table now i could have multiple tables in uh, in my requirement 
so there must be a grouping of this table so for example i am maintaining uh, i have an um, uh, you know so that umbrella under which all the tables or related object comes is called database under a single database there could be multiple tables there could be multiple views there could be multiple functions so function views don't uh, don't think much about it just now for the timing just uh, concentrate on table so a single database can have multiple table right so in the hierarchy the first thing lies is a server a machine basically where all your data is going to lie then comes your database and under database you have tables right that's how your hierarchy is defined for a table so server is a machine so whenever i'm in a data bricks i have a cluster that part is taken care right so in 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 my uh, data bricks i have already a cluster right this the when, whenever i run it i will have a cluster assigned so that server part is taken care next thing is a database i have to create a database in order to go to table right so for creating a database it's a very simple syntax create database database name so let me just create a database called test db okay uh usually in uh, other uh, i mean programming languages the syntax is create database database name uh, spark has given an additional this one if not exist okay you can write this without using if not exist also but the good part about if not exist is it will avoid duplicates uh, sorry it will avoid error so for example if i have a database already exist test db and again i am writing a query that create database test db it will give me an error saying that the database already exist so if i am mentioning this statement if not exist it will check if the database exist or not if it exist it will not create it if it does not exist then only it will create it. clear so let's first create a database any questions so far whatever we discussed guys i understand that for some it might be very new they might not be aware about table sql so that's pretty normal don't hesitate to ask questions even how small or how uh, uh, you know simple it is yeah so brother, like we should have permissions to create the data or directly yes. one can create them that is something what is uh, set at an admin level hey. can you please uh, mute yourself no no it's not yeah. from my side somewhere yeah yeah yes yeah, okay okay so uh, what i am telling okay, you okay. yeah so that is something permission which is being set at your admin level when your admin we, we create a server okay they establish the permission okay who has the permission to do what right and then yeah. based upon your user uh, you part of which group or something you, uh, they will based upon what permission you have you have to either you can create it or you cannot that's how it works when, in case of a data bricks as the cluster is completely dedicated to you in a community edition you can do whatever you want so what happens usually in the, in in if you go uh, when you start uh, working subrat, right sorry. all subrat sorry to cut you off just, I, I just want just to one minute just one minute yeah. hold on just one minute okay so sorry, in, yeah. in case when you work in a company right what happened is in a product so you might have different workspace for development environment uh, you have a different workspace for production environment you have different workspace so your admin what they will do all this create permission they will allow you in a dev one environment so in a dev environment you will be able to create the database and table but when you go to production environment they will restrict you you cannot do those things there right so that's how they control it yeah yeah sorry you can ask your question uh, no i am so sorry i just cut you off in the middle no. uh, so uh, can you navigate me once again through the option i have the workspace enable on the uh, left side pan i just okay. clicked on that and then user i see shared workspace i see so where sure. should i go to get that sure sure so you are, you might be getting something like this user yeah you are yes. getting a user here okay click on yeah. user okay yeah and then right click create create yeah. a notebook okay okay create a notebook give a name to your notebook okay and then let's say you start a simple program let's say print hello world okay and then how to run it whatever shift enter 
press shift enter it will run initially when it run you might not have a cluster over here okay so it will give you a prompt that whether you want to attach a cluster or create a cluster click on that one it will create a cluster it will take some time and once the cluster is created your program will get executed okay thank yeah. you so much yeah. no problem okay so clear on that part the permission part and all okay so i have my database created now let me run this command without exist namespace already exist exception test db already exist now let me try the same not exist will not create because this time if you take it to take some 35 second but it just uh, finished in 0 0.12 second because it checks that that it, there is already something exists so it will not create now whenever we are doing something as i said right the first thing is storage there must be somewhere where this thing should be created so you can see it see it here go to catalog okay and inside your database tables you can see the, the database being created here so database has its own file system okay and so whatever you create it will store the data in form of files inside this file system clear on this you can see whatever database you will create over here what, what is the underlying okay. database test db right that's what we create right um, but test. is it like your sql or like where is it created databricks cloud uh, I think it has its own cloud infrastructure from which it is provisioning the machine unless and until you select something when you select Azure and all it will create in Azure but I think Databricks has its own cloud infrastructure where it creates it I see. usually in company when we go right we have our own cloud provider so uh, basically we do that but I don't think that Databricks has a preferential uh, this one vendor Databricks might be maintaining it own. but that's a mystery to me as well that's what my assumption is I do not have any solid fact to say, uh, say that uh, you know, Databricks uses that or not this one. Because these are all private cloud, right? I don't think that they must be, uh, you know, taking some help from any outside vendor. They are giving their services to those vendors. They must be maintaining their own private cloud. Okay, thanks. Hi, hello, I have one question. Uh, is it a MS SQL or Postgres or MySQL? No, beneath? no it, it, it is Spark SQL or Databricks SQL where you are seeing it not spark it is databricks uh, sql it is no uh, microsoft sql see what happened is sql is a plain programming language right so understand like this you have database system a database system is all about storing the data creating tables creating databases writing queries writing functions and all that's about a database system then comes vendor then let's say comes oracle Oracle provides this database management system uh, with its own offering. Oracle has its own uh, some some syntax changes here and there, some way to store data, some way to provide the indexing and all. Then your Microsoft SQL Server, right? They have also provided the similar kind of feature, but some tweaks here and there with some additional features pro, from Microsoft side and all that. Then similarly, uh, Postgres SQL, right? Something similar is done by Databricks over here. So Databricks is not doing any Databricks. It is not whatever database or table we are creating is nothing part of this one. It is completely the Databricks one. Okay. But in let's say you have a database defined in MS SQL, or if you have a database defined in Postgres SQL, you can you can connect that one using Databricks, get the data, do your operations, and then save it back to the database. That's also that also option is there. Databricks. Okay. We will see something similar when we study about Synapse. Clear? Hello? Is that clear? Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Good. Okay. <coughs> so next is create table. In create table, the syntax is first give the database name that you are using. Usually what happens when you create a table and you are not mentioning any database, uh, it creates the database under default. The default is a default database provided by Databricks. But if you mention, if you create your own database and mention this, all the tables would be created under that database. Okay. So create table syntax, pretty simple. Create table, table name. Give the column name, data type, column name, data type, and all that. Okay. 
so employee id integer last name string first name string all that i'm not going into the primary key and all those things over here because uh, we just want to cover the basics of sql uh, and whenever we went into a project mode and we have to define that one at that point of time we'll define the primary keys for and key and the relation right so here only the plain simple syntax of a sql so create table uh, yeah again if not exist is an optional one but as we saw what is the advantage of using if not exist clause so create table table name uh, column name data type so based upon your requirement you can mention the data type and all right and this will create a table for you so Select data from a table. Let the table be created. Meanwhile, let's uh, discuss this one. When you want to select data from a table, okay, the syntax is select. Uh, did you mention? Did you notice something? If it is Python percentage as a uh, comment uh, will work right but when it is sql the uh, sorry the hash did not work i have to give this one right? so based upon which programming language you choose the cell will behave accordingly uh, in that id right if it is a python and i give the hash it will work as a comment but if, as it is a sql it doesn't work column name okay let's say one column name two and whatever how many columns you want from your table name this is what the syntax is and let's say you want all the columns select star from table name star means uh, it tells that you want you are interested in all the columns from the table that's how it is so if i from the above table if i have to select i'll do select star from which table I created? Employee. Okay, because we just created the table, there is no data inside it. That is the reason it did not return anything. In order to mention a table, either you can mention the table name. So by default, it will read which is the active uh, database at this point, or you can mention database name dot table name. So you can mention something like what is the database name test db test db dot employee that's also good work okay so now we do not have any data in the table so let's some insert some data insert data is insert into there's an insert into script insert into table name and values then uh, enter values for all the columns right so So see here what I'm doing. Here, my employee has these many columns, right? Employee ID, last name, first name, birth date, photo, and notes. These are the uh, column my employee table has. And I want to insert data. And I want to insert multiple rows into it, right? So how are we doing it? We are doing it insert into, yes, table name. Okay, table name is employee. Okay, table name is employee values and then we are inserting values for each and every column remember one thing you should maintain the same sequence in which the columns are defined in your table okay otherwise chances are there if they are of same data type and if you miss the sequence you might not get correct result if they are of different data type and you miss the sequence the insert query might fail for example let's say i have here birth date and photo both are string and here is my birth date uh, so if i reverse this order instead of birth date i put the value of a photo and then instead of photo i put the value of a birth date so while select from the table you will get in this uh, wrong data right and let's say i put something called salary here uh, which is an integer right and instead of putting a value i just start putting some email id dot pick so i'll get an error that 
in an integer field you are trying to insert some string so be careful about it so this is how i am inserting data into the table i have inserted some 10 rows okay so let's just execute it again people who wants to uh, i mean for sql w3 school is a very good uh, starting point so w3 school for sql okay so here you have everything available you can try your code also here so i would suggest whoever are new to sql along with this notes go through w3 school as well okay so i have now 10 rows inserted into my table let's just execute the select star right and these are the 10 rows i can see okay so somebody who joined today sajanya right uh, uh, my name is nikta if you are uh, looking for me yeah yeah. yeah 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 now i have a question so let's say i want employee id and last and first name from this table how my query should look like so you should define those two alone and remove the asterisk uh, give me the uh, give me the complete query so select, let's select first it. name yeah select Select first, select first name, uh, em, sorry, employee ID, first name, uh, comma, last name from employee. Employee ID, first name, last name from employee. From the database right. dot employee, I think, in your case. Right. SDB dot employee. Dot right. employee. Semicolon. That's it. Yeah. Uh, without semicolon, also, it will work. Yeah. So, if I'm not interested, if I'm interested only three columns, I just need to give that. Clear, everyone? Okay. Uh, one more thing as we are discussing about select, let's talk about conditional select. Okay. What is conditional select? Is let's say I want to select based on certain condition. I only want people whose employee ID is less than five. I don't want everything. I just need the uh, five uh, people. I just need employee ID who uh, people who employee ID is less than five. Okay, just an hypothetical requirement. So let me pick a name. I mean, I have not. Uh, we have not discussed it, yet, but just want you guys to try. Ashish. Yeah. You can unmute yourself and tell me. Yeah. 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 You what do I need to tell? I I'm need sorry. all the empl I'll need all the employees whose employee ID is less than five. Less than five. Uh, yeah. so it's gonna be Nancy, Andrew, Janet, and Margaret. That's correct. But what is the query? So one, part? two, three, four. So one, two. What three, is the query? Four. So I mean, give me the query. Uh, give me the exact query. How it look like? How it'll look like? Uh, Select uh, employee I. Uh, uh, just a second. Okay. Okay. All these columns. Let's say employee ID, first name and last name. Right. Let me just pick uh -huh. three columns for the yeah. timing. Okay. Then what next? Yeah. From. From, from test DB employee. Comma was employ employee ID less than five. How do how to define that condition? Do you know? Do you have any idea? Actually, no. Okay. Anybody else? Where employee? You can use where clause. Yes. So in where clause, it is uh, conditional. We have to give where. Okay. Then your condition. Employee ID is less than five. Okay. So that's your conditional select. Using a where clause, you can do that one. So now let's see how our data looks like. Uh, this is my catalog. I'll go to test DB. I have an employee table created. Okay. And we can see it here. It's pretty much in the cluster. 
once the cluster dies you no know, you will be losing all these records okay these records won't be available anymore to you okay that's uh, a disadvantage of the community edition whereas uh, when you take a full fledged subscription right when a cluster would be completely dedicated to you uh, you know they will not because they will not the data won't be deleted so what happen is in case of a community edition right the machine that data breaks is assign is assigning you is random so for example when i'm using this my cluster they must be giving a machine one next time when they give me a cluster they might be giving me a different machine which is available at that point of time so all my data which was stored in a previous machine would be lost but when you go for a full fledged subscription that is not going to happen they will because they will give you the dedicated machine and your data is not going to loss right so that's a little trade off uh, when you go for a community edition clear okay ah uh, subrap so one quick question ha huh. uh those inserts uh, before uh, changing it into sql format those are in single lines right how did you change it in sql format uh, so usually what happen is uh, Uh, when you just select this one that is a formatting uh, this one uh, i want shortcut to key, i want yeah. control control shift f control shift f right? yeah thank you yeah that, that's formatting okay uh, subrat i i have yeah. one more question here uh, this is nigra here again uh, that is my cluster in the right hand side right in the tab uh, so my so my cluster is a cluster see what happened whenever yeah. you run something run a program or anything you need a machine right you need some memory or something is needed right you need a physical space correct correct that's part so is there a way i could uh, is there a way i see the you know run time is quite high like uh, in my case maybe there was a network issue or something so in real time case like when i will get a physical like proper machine to work proper version of data bricks to work Will I have multiple uh, cluster to you know? Uh, let's say I have a complex query to execute. Yes, yes. So will I now? Exactly. So now when you see right, when you go for your compute cluster, when let's say I'm creating a compute, what they are giving you is a one driver and zero worker, right? So when you have a full fledged subscription, you can decide uh, how many worker node you want, and what is the memory configuration that you want. Here it is only fifteen point three GB two cores memory. right there there are a lot of options would be available where you can select what, what uh, let's say you you want a, a 60 gb memory and a 10 a 20 nodes 20 cores uh, you know machine you need right so those are the options given to you and you can select it so when i save my notebook um, my program uh, in the uh, like folder will that cluster come along with it or each time i go and execute it it will uh... when you run it so thing like that this okay i write a code uh, have, have you ever worked in any uh, sort of programming be it sql be it python or any programming language uh, not I mean, a cloud least, in the traditional it, it, databases and forget about cloud forget about cloud during our btech also we might have run some c c++ programming yeah right? yeah 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 Yeah. I can write a C++ programming, but without a machine, can I execute it? I can write my C++ programming and get a printout of of it. But whenever I write a program without machine, can I execute it? No. But I can write it right. While writing, there is no constraint. Yes. So while executing only, a machine or a cluster comes into picture, right? And to store it also, to store the program in a uh, computer, you need some storage, and that's where a machine comes into picture. right your program right. file whatever your notebook you are writing it is going to store somewhere right so that's where your machine comes into picture your cluster comes into picture okay, okay. i thought it's just the computational power like what is adding up in the notebook right? data bricks so i cluster, it in that way so cluster mostly for your spark programming uh, you know there are storage heavy cluster there are computational heavy clusters so usually okay. when we are writing complex queries and processing huge amount of data we go for a computation heavy cluster right which have higher core okay. and uh, you know more processing capabilities but let's say you want to store lot of data in memory right so in that case you can go for a storage heavy cluster clear okay yeah okay uh, now thank you. i have one question uh, what we are learning now is spark sql no it is plain sql it is only sql 
and is it possible we can on frame the sql we can connect in this cluster uh, uh no this one you cannot connect with them so you are telling that uh, this is the cluster and let's say i have a sql server management studio i can connect this uh, server that's what you are asking right yeah 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 no that's not possible that's feasibility is not there Now update table. Let's say you want to update a row. For example, for this employee one, it is Nancy, right? Nancy Dev uh, So for example, I want to update the last name as David. For example, I'm just an hypothetical one. Okay. So update statement works like update table, update table name, set which column you want to update. Okay. And then a where condition. okay so if i want to update this last name uh, of employee id 1 to let's say david what should be my query syntax is let me just let's select a new line here this is my update statement Now I want to update it. So what my syntax says? My syntax says the update statement is update table name. What is my table name? Test db dot employee. Okay. Read this. What change you want to do? Start start with a set. Set. I just want to change the last name. Last name to David. Is it that for every last name I want to change it to David? No, I want to change it only for those for whom the employee ID is equal to one. Right. Okay. So now if we run this one. can see that it has been changed right okay now delete from table let's say I want to delete the fourth record from the table it is pretty similar to what we learn in update delete from table name then give your condition so this is my table so whoever is new to SQL can you please unmute yourself and tell me what should be the delete syntax? Uh, let me just remove this while permission goes on. Let this one. Okay. Yes, I want to delete the fourth row. So can you just give me the syntax? I want to delete the employee ID equal to four. And this is my syntax. Delete from table name where condition. Let me know how can I apply this syntax. Okay. I am writing it here. This is the syntax. Let's apply. Sorry. Let me know how can we write it. Tell me. Right. Somebody has unmuted, right? And Okay. Nobody wants to try. It would be delete from what is my table name? This where employee ID equals to four. Right? Delete from table name where employee ID equals to four. Okay, drop table. So delete is all about deleting an individual row or multiple rows from a table. 
now what do you what if i want to completely drop my table i want to delete the table uh, from my database in that case the query is drop table drop table will completely remove your table from your database so let's say i want to drop my employee table it is simple drop table okay so now if i write a select statement will it work because the table does not exist it got dropped okay now if i refresh it is nothing right the table got dropped so we have to create it let's create it one more time so what's the difference between delete and drop look like you tell me okay. you tell me no no you tell me look like when you drop hmm? table table of uh, whole table gone exactly and when we delete what happens the only the rows table. of the table went yeah only the selected rows you cannot completely drop a table what you can do max with the delete command is you can remove all the rows from the table you can make the table empty but the table will still there without any data inside the database when you drop the table basically you are completely removing the table from the database understood oh, that means like we suppose not to use a drop ah right? yes you are not supposed to that's why in production they give very restricted permission somebody drop the table imagine what will happen yeah right okay uh selecting distinct value select distinct values distinct value means for example i have repeated values uh, in a particular table and i want <coughs> distinct value for it so so just... can anyway we can bring that back if we drop that table in the same in if you have the backup store if you have the backup store oh very scary then yes you, for that matter what they do you know there is something called external table okay so it will be little deviation from the topic but uh, let me just explain that one what is an external table we'll cover external table when we we'll go to synapse see usually when we're defining a table we understand three attributes right one is a uh, your schema uh, one is your storage and uh, one is the data right that's what three things that we discussed okay so out of which what happened whenever we are creating a table in this one or whenever you're creating a table in uh, ssms the schema and the data are part of the same space your schema is storing in some server designated to sql server uh, or let's say in this case data bricks and your data also is stored in the same space right but when you go for an external table what you do is there is a data store somewhere else for example i have data store in my data lake okay and i want to create a table on top of that data over here right so what happen you just define the schema in data bricks and point the data location to the data store in data lake right so in that case your data lies in a different place your schema lies in a different place that's called external table so in case of an external table when you simply write a drop statement it will just drop the schema or drop the presence of the table from data bricks but the underlying data which is present in an external location will still be there right so that's where external table comes into picture so for for similar cases or when we want to share the data across multiple this one we go for an external table or in a case of an external table a drop statement would not delete the underlying data of a table clear okay let me uh, create a table quickly to uh, explain this one create table let's see sales okay here we'll be having the ice okay it table sales let me insert into Sales values. So 
let's see my product was 10 price that i sell for the first time is 10 rupees i sell let's say a notebook price that i charged was let's say 20 rupees let me just repeat it Let's see, this is my data. The value pen of type string cannot be called. Ah, and you know, string. No, no, string. yes, exactly, exactly. I defined a wrong this one, right? This is product name is integer. And I'm trying to insert a string here. So that's why. Uh, now, if I write it, it will it will throw me an error, right? Because I already have a sales table defined. So if I'm doing it, until there is a sales table exists. Let me drop this one and recreate it. Everybody clear what why we face this error? Because we have defined the data type of product name as integer, and I was trying to insert a string here. Okay, now select if I do. product name from sales and I enter product name what is the name I've given it product name given it. there is some spelling error here so when you are writing something which is not present it will give you this syntactical error analysis exception So pen, notebook, pencil, sketch, pen, notebook. I want what is the distinct product that I'm selling, right? There are, pen is repeated multiple times. I just want what kind of product I am selling today. So for that, if I just write distinct, it will give me, these are the distinct product that I'm selling, okay? One more thing, somebody was asking, right, whether uh, the, the SQL that we are running is Spark SQL or it is a plain Databricks SQL. So it seems like Databricks, whatever SQL you are writing, it is taking it as a job and it is treating it as a Spark SQL. That's why it is creating a Spark job. We'll understand what a Spark job is, what a Spark SQL is. But just see, when we are writing a Python program, there was no such Spark job was created, right? If you go inside a Spark job, you can see what stages or something that it, it has created. Right, there are so multiple I, stages. So, but I uh, saw some YouTube videos earlier today. There are so many uh, SQL there. This is uh, MySQL SQL Server for Microsoft. Yeah. So, what happened as I was explaining, right? There is database management system. Okay. So, when you say database management system, what you need is you need to store your data, you need to structure your data. You need a facility so that you can write some code on top of your data, right? All those things you need, right? That's a database management system. Now, these facilities are provided by multiple vendors. MySQL is one such vendor, okay? So, you can MySQL, uh, you can uh, install MySQL software, give it a server, and then create your table on top of it, right? Then MySQL, uh, there is an engine. So, when you write a query, there must be an engine, right, which is understanding your query, understanding that uh, you are needing data from sales it is going to the it is searching that where my sales table exists fetching the data see what all columns you are writing checks if your query syntax is correct or not you need an engine for that right a sql engine for that so all those vendors provide those engines and provide you the facilities to create this database management for your requirement so these are different vendors which provide this facility 
there are some differences between each and every be it mysql ms sql server or oracle or postgres but fundamentals are pretty much the same if you know one it is easy to learn and understand the other system clear okay thank you yeah alter table so for example i have the sales table right i want to add a column to this table uh, uh, let's say quantity okay so any any change in the schema in the table that you want to do you can do it through an alter table statement right the syntax is let's say i want to add a new column right so what i have to do alter table uh, table name add column new column name and then give the data type so for example alter table my table name was sales at column quantity let's say integer so I have quantity as I have I do not have any value for it I have everything as null now let's say for all these entries okay I want to give a quantity 10 for each and everything how to do it I want to update the value to quantity to 10 for each and every entry anybody who is not familiar with SQL but whatever we have learned so far can uh, should uh, would like to try Come on, this is a simple thing. Yeah, we will learn something called update, right? You are updating the row, right? So, what is the syntax of an update? Syntax update for update. sales. Yes, so just update sales. Yes, set that is quantity. Yeah, quantity set QTY equals 10. And very good that we want it for all the rows so no need to mention any condition okay very good everything becomes 10 now okay next come certain functions called mean max count average so the name are pretty descriptive right you know for a given column what is the minimum value i want what is the maximum value i want what is the count total number i want what is the average so let's let's first uh, count count is a very easy one so let's discuss a little bit about count so for example i want to know how many rows are present in my sales table okay so for that syntax for count is select count column for which you want from table name so let's say i want to understand how many rows are there using this how can i write a query so select count that is fine what should i write inside know that how many rows are there so we need for everything right and when there is everything what is that we write in select statement star sorry star 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 exactly star this this is a very simple one I mean, people use it on day in day out so there are six rows that's what i got to know count star let's say i want to know what is the distinct what are the uh, distinct product not number uh, not distinct product but number of product distinct number of products i have so if i write here product name how many product i have Does it give me the correct answer do i have six product i have basically four product right when you write the distinct i believe we have four product 
but it give me uh, the duplicated product or repeated product also so how can i get distinct product information what is the change i need to make in this query we learn something right how to get distinct values count distinct count distinct yes so give me four distinct product i have now let's move to other function mean max mean i mean this is pretty simple you know what is mean means uh, what is the minimum value in a given column what is the maximum value of that column in the entire table what is the average value so in the sales let's say i have priced this what is the minimum price that i have sold i have the minimum price is 10 that is of a pen right so in order to do min my syntax is select min column name from table name so select min Ice from sale 10. Okay, now let's tweak your question a little bit. I want which all products have minimum price in this table. I just need to select all the products that have minimum price. So, this is a little uh, what you can say, a little advanced concept of a subquery comes into picture but let's give it a try i want the product name which is the minimum price so in this case your minimum price is 10 and uh, the product are basically pen and pencil right so if i know that my price is 10 primary minimum price is 10 what should be my query select product name from sales where Price equals to 10. This will give me this is given me pen and pencil. And if I want distinct, pen and pencil are the two products for which the price is 10. Here I provide a static value. A hard coded value that 10 is the price that from the table there's a very limited data so i can see that 10 is the minimum price so I, I i just saw it but i don't know what is the minimum price a huge data and for me to scan through each and every individual element and finding the minimum price is difficult so how can i replace this hard coded value here we just learn right how to get the minimum price yeah somebody was telling something yeah, a sub query oh, yes. uh... this is called sub query right this query helps the minimum uh, the uh, main query to get the result so this is called sub query okay pen and this is another way of writing this okay now okay here we are facing a problem right uh, the product name there is a misspell and i'm getting this one if i want to change the name of this column instead of this proc name if i want to change it to product name how to do it which which command that we have learned so far will be able uh, will be able to solve this one alter table. alter alter table exactly alter table and then you have to change just try it out okay how to change the column name using alter table okay rename uh, yeah yes 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 you're right okay so now uh i i believe i don't need to write the uh, exact syntax for how min max count will work right min max count average will work because they follow the same thing but actually mean max count average this is not a real-time requirement of this one right we do not use mean max average in this we usually use this one in an aggregated function for example let's say i have these many products okay i want the so one notebook and it is not like that every notebook will sold in 20 rupees in a real time scenario. there are multiple notebooks every notebook has different price let's say i want for every product what is the minimum and maximum price right for every product what is the total quantity what are the total notebooks i have what is the total pen i have what is the total pencil i have 
so for example i want that for every products what is the total number i have okay so my question is something like this count of each product so let me start with okay i need product name need product name i need count of that product right so count of that product from sales then this should give me for a notebook how many this are there then error why this is an error this link missing group by so when we go to aggregate we understand what why this error happens because what we were asking the table is give me a count based on a group i want to group the table based on product right so the table needs to know that it has to group the data it has to group create a group for notebook it has to create a group for pen it has to create a group for pencil it has to create a group for sketch and then for every group it wants to count right so it did not instruct the table to do the grouping that's why it gives an error right so once we instruct the table to do a group it will work fine so while uh, studying aggregate function we'll uh, understand how to instruct the table to do a group So so far, is it clear? Are you finding it difficult? How is it going? Since I have never learned this SQL, kind of complicated for me now. So I think if I do practice, then I will get it. I guess. Yeah. Yes. 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 You have to practice, and this W three SQLs just go through it. and uh, you know practice it is already there it's not a problem of deleted it so sam what i will suggest is uh, you know programming is a thing the more you practice the more you gets in hands on it right so yeah. don't hesitate in practicing stuff you have an id you know the concept you know where to learn from okay just do as much as practice you can if you face any problem ask it in the next class okay, okay. uh so brat just a repeat question uh you just told us the uh, shortcut key of uh, sql formatting right will you repeat control that control shift please? f control shift f okay thank you Subrat, did we cover the alter? Am I no right? Yes, we cover alter. We cover alter. I was asking a question, right? How to change this one? Uh, the name of a column, and somebody answered that using alter statement. we covered alter to uh, you know change the data type or something right or add a column yeah, right? please we covered alter so, nothing so alter is yeah yeah sure so alter is pretty much alter table table name and if you want to add a column just add, add column give a column name and data type if you want to rename a column go for rename command and uh, you know give the uh, uh, old name and the new name right so those are the scope okay. of your alter statement here we have tried we add a, a value called quantity and there is an homework so here if i if you see there is a spelling error with the product name so i want you to write an alter statement and change it to product name yeah right? okay okay yeah that group by you said no group by uh, aggregate mm -hmm. i will come i will come so i i i introduce the problem statement you understand what the problem statement we talked about right yeah. here what yes, yes. Oh, sorry sorry where is it was i have introduced the problem statement ha huh. so okay so what i was trying to do here is for every single product what is the count right that is what we are looking for how many pencils are yeah. there how many pen is there so that's what we are looking for right but so in that case we are asking the uh, uh, engine to give us a count based on different group 
but there is no instruction from our side that the table should be grouped right that's why this query failed so when we go yeah, to what aggregate I'm function yeah yeah I, so what i'm thinking is like you mentioned the product name you should give the product name then count up that one right each product yes but it failed right that is what our expectation is that is what our end result is but it failed it failed because as i explain we are asking to give a count based on on a group we ask us to uh, group the data for notebook create a group for a notebook create a group for paint create a group for pencil and then give the count for each and every group right but we did not okay. instruct our query does not mention anything about grouping right that's why okay. it failed okay so we'll understand how to give that instruction thank you yeah okay yeah next part is sum so let's say uh, i have an order detail okay and uh, i have uh, order detail id order id product id quantity everything okay and i want the sum of total quantity that i am selling right okay Create table associated table is not empty, so is it like that? I have not deleted it or what? Check let's see. Table not found, but still seems like the location it is there. So I have to delete it. Sometimes data bricks is keeping the underlying path. It is there. We have to manually delete it. Okay, so select star from order details. You give me everything. Let's say I want the sum of quantities. Okay, total sum. But if I want the sum of quantities against each product, let's say here I have in distinct product, or let's say uh, okay, let's say I want against every order. What is the total quantity? Right. This is an order ID. I have if you see I have only totally two orders right for this order The total quantity is 12 10 5. So total is uh, 27 for this order. The total is 49. Let's say I want against each order ID. What is my quantity? Here it will fail because I am I am expecting the result in a group format, but I'm uh, there is no instruction to group the data, right? That's where the aggregate function comes into picture. Okay. Now there is something called wild card selection. Wild card is uh, let's say this is a customer name. Okay. And sometimes what happen is I know I have something called uh, Maria Anders. I mean I know only the name is Maria, but I do not know the full name. So let's say I know somebody yeah. exists in Maria. Yeah. So then you are removing something every time. What? Why that is? See, what is happening is happening. what is happening. Uh, no, no. What is happening is for some reason the underlying path where this table is created, right? This is where uh, DataBricks is meant. Either DataBricks might be associated giving me the same cluster, same machine because of which the path is not deleted. If I just write a select star from customer without creating it, it will now if let's say if I write select star from customer, it will throw me that the table does not exist. Uh, the, but when I want to create it, when I want to create the table, it is telling that the underlying path exists. So what is happening when you create a particular table? It as we discussed, right? The data must be stored in some file format, and that must be some storage. So DataBricks is giving this path to store the data. Okay. So the format is pretty much the same DBS user hive warehouse then your database name and then your table name database follows this standard format for everything that we are storing right unless and until we are giving a store 
you are giving a location so when you do it so for this also databricks is trying to when i'm creating is databricks is trying to create the same uh, path for this one but earlier when the cluster was terminated when it was started for some reason the file path did not get deleted okay the file path is still there so databricks is telling me that for this uh, this path already exists right it is not empty so that's why it is throwing me an error so for which I have to truncate the data whenever you want to create it, you know, in Databricks, we have seen that uh, for some reason, the, uh, the, uh, the, the folder is not empty or the folder is not deleted and you are trying to create a table on top of that Databricks throws this error. So as a matter of practice, when you want to create a table from fresh, so just uh, apply, uh, you know, run a delete command on it and then create table if not exists. That's what we have to do. Okay. If it is an insert into or insert override, that's fine. No need to delete. But if you want to create it afresh, always try to delete the underlying location. Thank you, Sita. Yeah. So what I was trying to see tell here is, for example, I know that there exists an employee called Maria, but I do not know what's the full name of the employee. Okay. So for example, this is customer name. Uh, okay, Maria is the contact name the contact name but i do not know what exactly it is so if i just type where customer name equals to maria maria let's say i'll not find anything because the customer name is maria anders right if i just give maria it will not work so for that we provide usually like operator like operator just see a part of the text and try to search over here so like operator works like this like and let's say i know the maria exists so for for example i know that maria is the first part of the name so i know that first part and i do not know what is the last part so the part that is unknown i just put it as a percentage over here so it will see that where, wherever the contact name starts with Maria, it will give me that. Customer name by Maria. What happened? Let me see that. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, I missed it. Let me see this. Okay, it give me Maria Anders. For example, I know that uh, I know that there is somebody exists with a contact name Anders, but I don't know the first name. How this query should look like? Here, the last name at the last part I am confident of, but I do not know what is going to be my first part. So here, the percentage or the wild card should come at the beginning. That's how it goes to be. That's how it is. But let's see. I know that it is. Uh, let's let me take. Okay, this uh, constitutions. Okay. Okay, this I know that uh, for one of the customer, the address has a term constitution, but I don't know whether it is the first part of this address or the second part of the address. I have no idea. Right? It's just simple wildcard. So here I don't know where exactly this term exists. So in that case, where you do not know whether it is the first part of the string or the last part of the string, enclose this value with the percentage at both ends. You can do the same thing for others also. But why it didn't work? Okay, this is address. Contact name. when we enclose this character those character for which uh, what we are searching inside two percentage it will look for everything right and when you remove this one let's say i remove this one it assumes that the character starts with this this word but we do not know the end part of it so it will give me nothing because there is no no such uh, address which starts with this uh, this 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 substring right and the reverse also let's say i say this that I want something which ends with this. There is nothing, right? Because this one ends with this part four two two two. So uh, clear about this wildcard search wildcard character. 
yes yeah so there are two things pending one is join and one is group by these are little advanced in sql okay so i would suggest just go through this fundamental and tomorrow we'll cover sql joins and group by and then we'll start with spark clear any questions anybody wants to ask uh, so but this is sandeep uh, i have a question so you, you are running different uh, programs in different cells side right? so in real time do we write all the code in one cell no no different yeah. cell different cell it's all different cell so let's take an example okay let's say i am reading a sales file okay and uh, i want to do that uh, i want to figure out uh, what are the sales across month in different month then that data i want to store it in a uh, synapse table or in some table so usually what we do we divide that into three tasks my first part will go as reading the data right so in one cell i will write reading my data so uh, reading the data right second part is all about data processing second cell i'll do the data processing and third cell i will do data saving now there is no such restriction you can write everything in one cell that's fine but for readability purpose we usually maintain different cells you might have a question that if i am writing something here will uh, if i am defining a variable or something over here will the other cell be able to get that one yes they are pretty i mean it is part of the same notebook so whatever you are defining here other cell would, would, will be able to understand okay, okay. Uh, yeah so i mean would these cells uh, run in the same sequence same sequence yes one by other one by uh, one by one and if you want to run the whole notebook that's why the run all command is there right so whenever we deploy our notebook in production and in data factory uh, when i schedule it right so data factory does like a run all so it runs the cell starting from zero or one to end but one thing if there is an error in between the entire flow would be stuck the cells after that will not get executed okay but the completed cells uh, would still uh, reflect right or will it roll back will reflect yes no no it will reflect there is no roll back in case of a notebook it's an ide right so it will not roll back Uh, when I have another question, so when you have opened the catalog here, so mm -hmm. there is along with the databases, there is one more option for you DBFS, uh, yeah. which in my Databricks uh, community edition I don't see that. How to so this that this is community edition only. But Mine I don't have that uh, DBFS option. I see only database. Is it? Then it should be there. We have to enable it from Akron. From? How do we enable that? Uh, yeah, uh, my uh, even for me also, I see only database tables. Uh, there is no DBFS. Did I do any setup with my own? Just a file system. Go to admin settings. And there is a thing called DBFS file browser. Just enable it. Which part it is? Workspace settings. DBFS.
okay yeah. you might have disabled it okay i didn't do anything i mean it was by default available for me so here you can go for admin settings okay and go to workspace settings and here you can enable it dvfs file drop can you try it now Oh, strange. I haven't enabled it, but yeah. still I'll get it. Yes, sir, bro. Uh, super bright. Yeah, I enable that and refresh the browser. I got that option now, DBFS option. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can also yes, observe uh, one more thing, super. So when you are running the programs in different cells, right? So sometimes it is running two jobs, sometimes it is giving four spark jobs, different different count is giving, even though you are running correct. one cell. Correct, correct. So it all depends how spark is executing it. So when we'll uh, go a little bit about the spark job and how a spark job is created, how stages are created, then uh, you know we'll be get a complete understanding of that. This is so not the right internal to internal to Spark. Databricks, right? It is not with the program. It is internal to Spark actually. On Databricks, of course, definitely. But it is not to do with the program. It is internal to Databricks or Spark, you can say. Okay. Okay. We'll understand this. We'll understand how the stages are created, how these are created, all those things we'll understand. Uh, Subrat, on here, one quick question. Uh, so we have uh, databases and we have multiple schemas, right? And in multiple schemas, we have different tables aligned, right? So what exactly how we can uh, identify uh, database name and schema name? How to identify database name and schema name? Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't get your question. When you say identify database name and schema name, so you are telling that uh, what is the input given to you from where you wanted to see? Because uh, in a database, we can have multiple schemas, right? And in multiple schemas, we can create uh, uh, different tables in each schema. Okay, okay. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. So you are so, saying that? Uh, yeah, tell me. Yeah, so what you are saying that from the given database, how to find a uh, table exists in which schema, right? That's what your question is. Yes. So for that, we usually refer to the catalog because Unity catalog contains all those details, the database information, the schema information, and uh, the table information. So you have to go this one or else, uh, you know, uh, there, is, there is some SQL that you can try. For example, use test DB, okay. Show tables if I do. It, it will give me everything right and here let's say you are interested for some schema or some table then you can just give something called like operator or uh, there is there is one operator in unity catalog you can do it but instead of that i would prefer that using spark catalog you can uh, you know retrieve all this information okay when you talk about unity catalog we can discuss this in detail okay so your requirement is, I mean, is that you just want to see whatever available in a database or you have a specific requirement that it is dynamically created, your schema and your table and you want to, uh, you know, through some searching, you want to identify from the name which schema and which table it exists. Uh, through searching. Uh... Through searching. Yes. Okay. In that case, we have a schema uh, name function as well, right? Schema name function under? Did select schema name. Uh, that is a function, and that shows which schema is being currently used. That is under SQL Server. Uh, yeah, SQL Server. That's a different thing. So here, all the syntax, which is you know. Uh, as I was telling that the basic SQL is going to be the same, but different uh, management system provides some certain functionalities, which is not there. Yeah. Yet. Okay, any further question? Uh, 
uh, in a notebook uh, in one cell can we write sql and uh, in other cell we can we include python yeah. program and run it together yes 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 you can do it let me show you that one so don't worry about the syntax just so let's see this page just type in some age 10 10 40 the data frame star dot create this page don't bother about the syntax just to show you Create data. Start for create data. Okay. Now, what you can do, you can create a view out of it. Create or replace. View. When I say temp view, it's temporarily exist for this session. Let's see. I give a view as age. I stored the result in age. And next part, I want to write the select star from age, the one that I created above. Okay. Clear? So here I write my Spark post, uh, PySpark code, stored the result in a view. And access the same view through a select through a SQL. Yes. Yeah. So that's pretty much possible. Thanks. Any other question, guys? Uh, hi, Sibra. Lekia here. I am from the APL background. Uh, mm -hmm. I used to work on Evanesio, so I just want to relate uh, Databricks with the APL tool. So, uh, how are we going to get the input in? Uh, in the databricks, are we going to get any flat files? And when are we going to use SQL and Python? And right. What exactly we're so, going to do? Uh, are we going to do any transformation? Uh, I, uh, I just want to know. Okay. Databricks can serve as an end to end ETL tool. You can uh, use the storage part of Databricks. You can use the transformation part of Databricks. You can use the orchestration part of Databricks. Everything Databricks has provided, but in a traditional, uh, you know, ecosystem of a data engineering, if I tell about Azure data engineering, right? Usually we store our data in some file format, let's say in a blob or ADLS, right? We store our data there mm -hmm. and Databricks or Spark for that matter provides facility to connect that storage. For example, I create some storage in Azure and I want to read the data which is present in that storage. So Databricks or Spark has the facility to connect that. So we call it as mount point. Creating a mount point, we can connect that one. Provided we have the required access. Okay. Similarly, if I have a table defined somewhere, let's say Oracle or I have SQL Server. So using a JDBC connection, I can connect to the table also in my Databricks. Right. So once I connect them, I read them, I can create a data frame or any mostly PySpark will create data frame on top of it. Right. And similar the way what I did here, I create a data frame on a static list, right? I can create a data frame on a table, which is present in some uh, SQL server or Oracle. I can create a data frame from some file, which is present in some storage. And then that data frame, let's say I create a table, write my SQL, or I want to write other program based on my requirement. I can do pretty much everything over there. So that's where a pretty typical use of Databricks or Spark comes into picture. It is still unclear. Can you elaborate your explanation? So when you are writing your ETL tool, right, you must, mm -hmm. so how it is, there must be some data lying somewhere, right? Either in a file format or let's say uh, in a database or in a table, right? It should be lying somewhere there. You must be reading it, right? And then you must be doing some transformation, some changes in the data and then storing it somewhere. That's yeah. how the flow looks like, right? Yeah. Now, where exactly you are doing the, 
while reading the data or while doing the transformation all this transformation and everything you must be write some code some sql something uh, uh, we do it in the tool so okay in the tool itself okay yeah. now let's say you have a complex logic so is is is, is the tool sufficient enough to do everything on whatever logic you need mm -hmm. yeah must and is it, but in, for the is input it, table we uh, we write the sql query to uh, so is it distributed in nature? Is it distributed? I mean, when I say distributed, uh, do you work in a single machine or cluster computing, or is it something uh, as per uh, with the big data stuff? Uh, no, in a single. So what happened is with the advent of big data and distributed computing, right? There are a lot of framework that come into picture. Mm -hmm. So the traditional way we are writing our data processing logic, be it any framework, be it Teradata or uh, uh, you know Informatica or as you are saying, I've been assured. So with the advent of big data, when we have this Hadoop or Spark, MapReduce, all those stuff, right? They uh, write, they leverage the uh, strength of distributed computing and make the program running much faster and much efficient. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that's why this uh, framework replaces the transformation part. You would be storing the data and then the transformation reading and these things would be replaced by this framework that we got as a part of the distributed computing or the traditional big data world. Right. So that's where your spark comes in. Instead of doing it in the tool, what is uh, what it is uh, what it is done is you write it write the code in a spark environment. Oh. Got it. And that's where what happened initially when Spark was there, people used to install the Spark in their machine. They used to install an ID, for example, a PyCharm or a Visual Code, and they used to write the this one. They create a package out of it and deploy it in a uh, production environment where they want to run their job. Databricks makes things little easy for us. Instead of you setting up the environment, you installing the software, you provision the cluster, we will do everything for you. You just write your code. Right? So all your transformation logic, I'm not saying Databricks, Databricks is only restricted to your transformation part. Databricks can do an end-to-end -end stuff for you. But for the time being, for the sake of simplicity, let's just understand that all your transformation logic, data processing logic has been taken care by Spark or in this case, your Databricks. Databricks okay. is nothing but the Spark on cloud. No, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other question, guys? Yeah, man. Uh, can you hear me, Sura? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's regard. It's not about cluster. Regarding regarding the codes, uh, I previously had knowledge on uh, Synapse and uh, Data Factory. Um, mm -hmm. you also, I didn't, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't attend the demo class. Uh, mm -hmm. demo class. I I need few few questions on um, codes. Or do you also do the teaching on the node migration like uh, from AWS to uh, Azure or no, anything no, like that? No, no, no. Migration is not part of this course. Okay. And uh, the pipeline maintenance or inc batch pipelines? Uh, ah, yes. Kafka, yes. Anything? Kafka, no. Streaming is not part of this course. Okay. Cool. We have a separate call uh -huh. together. Uh, do you guys teach the other the other thing the like migration including the, the is there any other course in visual path? Uh, that you have to get in touch with the visual path team but this course is mostly about azure data engineering and azure data engineering i mean spark data breaks uh, synapse data factory so these are the stuff mm -hmm. that we are going to cover okay like uh, how do hadoop and my produce uh, you will be doing in data hadoop and my Hadoop and MapReduce, uh, this one, your uh, Spark replacing MapReduce, right? And your storage, yeah, yeah. Hadoop are replaced by the cloud storage, right? Cluster manager, Yarn is a cluster manager, and nowadays people, uh, Databricks uses uh, Spark standalone cluster yeah. manager. Yeah, yeah, Databricks is everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So most of the company, they use Databricks? Huh. Yes. I saw some YouTube video they are teaching in uh, something called notebook. Uh, yeah, notebook, that's what I was telling, right? When you are going for a notebook environment, something like this, right? There's a PyCharm notebook where I have written a Spark code. 
right? No, they are so talking what? about uh, uh, some other. That's fine. The, this is just an ID. It could be Pi Charm. It could be Visual Studio. It could be Jupiter. It could be anything. Okay. It's just an ID, right? Uh, if you have developed in Java, you might be knowing something called Eclipse. Right. So these are ID oh, where you can develop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was talking about the Jupiter. I saw some Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So what happened is in that case, if it is Jupiter on cloud or something, then it is fine. All the installation, everything will be taken care by Jupiter, right? But if it is a desktop ID, so you have to make sure that all the Spark setup, Hadoop Util setup, all the configuration, it has to be taken care by you. So when we are going for a cloud-based ID like Databricks, we are taking all those pain, right? We are just focusing on our logic, on our business requirement. So that's it. And mostly people use Databricks. The Databricks uh, Spark uh, framework itself is much faster than the traditional Spark uh, framework or Spark engine. And that to Databricks offer a lot more services. Okay. Any other question, guys? Okay, if not, then uh, thank you everyone. Just go through what we discussed today. And if you have any question, uh, we'll discuss tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll cover a little bit of join and uh, this aggregate function. And then we'll move to Spark. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.